It's been a dozen years since Paul Atreides ascended to the throne as emperor. Embracing his role as the savior figure for the Freeman, Paul has triggered a holy war that has swept across the cosmos. Despite wielding unparalleled imperial authority, Paul finds himself unable to stop the extremism spawned by his messianic legacy. While the death toll climbs to a staggering 61 billion, Paul's prophetic visions assure him that humanity could face even a darker fate. He is visited by Stilgar, his former Freeman companion and now a leader within the New Empire, bringing unsettling news of plots against his rule. Despite this, Paul remains resolute in his determination to maintain control and guide humanity towards a better future. On the planet Wallach 9, the factions of Bene Gesserit, Spacing Guild, and Tylaxu join forces in a clandestine scheme to overthrow Paul from his position of power. Edric, the Guild Navigator, employs his own psychic abilities to conceal the scheme from Paul's visions. Reverend Mother Mohayim of the Bene Gesserit enlists Princess Irulan, daughter of Emperor Shaddam IV, and Paul's wife. Despite Paul's refusal to have a child with Irulan, and his failure to produce an heir with his freeman concubine, Cheney, tensions arise within his rule. Irulan, driven by a desire to secure her status within the Atreides dynasty and ensure the continuation for the Bene Gesserit's breeding program, clandestinely administers contraceptives to Cheney. Though Paul is aware of her actions, he foresees that the birth of his heir will result in Cheney's demise, prompting his reluctance to take action. A strategy is devised to dispatch a Tylaxa-created clone, known as Agola, of Duncan, Idaho, who was once the sword master of Paul. This Gola's purpose is to infiltrate Paul's mental stability and fostering an unconventional attraction for Malia. Paul grapples with remorse over the impending destiny he foresees for Cheney, a future only he can see through his abilities. He presides over a gathering where Princess Irulan earnestly pleads for the privilege of bearing Paul's successor. Supporting Irulan's plea, Cheney highlights the potential societal unrest arising from Paul's lack of an heir. However, he dismisses the request, citing her intricate ties with his adversaries, the Bene Gesserit. Meanwhile, Amidst the vast desert landscape of Dune, Sightail, a member of the Guild, undertakes a ruthless act, eliminating a man named Farrakh, adopts his identity, and abducts Uthim's daughter, a young girl previously under Farrakh's guardianship. Several days later, Ali appears through a keyhole, observing the grand entrance of the Guild on Dune. Edric presents Paul with an irresistible gift. Agola embodying Duncan Idaho, Paul's cherished mentor and ally from childhood, now bearing the name Hate. The schemers anticipate that Hate's presence will destabilize Paul's grip on power, challenging his authority and the very fabric of his empire. Moreover, Paul's acceptance of the Gola compromises his standing among the freemen, who view the involvement of the Tylaxu and their creations as impure. When Paul inquires about Hate's purpose, the Gola bluntly states that his mission is to eliminate him. Despite this revelation, Paul extends hospitality to the Guild and embraces the Gola, drawn to its uncanny resemblance to Duncan Idaho. Alia finds herself inexplicably drawn to Hate's enigmatic presence. Reverend Mother Mohayim is detained, a consequence of the banishment of Reverend Mothers from the planet Arrakis. Princess Irulan pays a visit to her cell, where the Mohayim implores her to consider eliminating Cheney. Taking matters into her own hands, Cheney adopts a traditional Freeman fertility regimen to safeguard against Irulan's potential interference with her food, ensuring her own pregnancy. Nonetheless, Cheney's prolonged use of Irulan's contraceptive methods has left her physically weakened, posing a risk to the pregnancy. A few days afterward, Alia indulges in a bath followed by a session of naked sword fighting. Her solitary activity is abruptly halted by the unexpected presence of Paul and Stilgar. 
Amidst their discomfort, they entertain the unsettling notion that the Guild might be orchestrating circumstances to encourage a union between Paul and Alia. Later, Paul engages in a dialogue with Edric, during which accusations of insincerity are leveled against the Khazard. Following Edric's departure, Paul contradicts Stilgar, asserting that his holy war hasn't illuminated the believers' minds, but instead led to the staggering loss of 61 billion lives. Alia and Hate venture into the vast expanse of the desert to investigate a deceased individual. Curious, Alia delves into Hate's background, engaging in a playful exchange. Upon their return to the city, a spontaneous kiss transpires between them. Alia harbors suspicions that the enigmatic body is connected to a face dancer. Meanwhile, Paul indulges in an additional dosage of melange, triggering vivid hallucinations. Despite his formidable abilities, Paul grapples with a profound sense of powerlessness, envisioning a future devoid of Cheney's presence. As hate appears, Paul finds himself contemplating whether the Gola is there only to ultimately kill him, or perhaps Duncan Idaho is inside. Subsequently, the trial of the Reverend Mother Mohayim commences. Paul becomes suspicious of the Guild's potential threat towards Cheney and proposes a deal to the Bene Gesserit, offering his genetic material in exchange for Cheney's safety. Disgusted by the notion of artificial procreation, the Reverend Mother rejects his offer. In the meantime, Sightail instructs Edric, whom he holds in contempt, to expedite Hate's efforts in eliminating Paul. Cheney discovers Princess Irulan's interference with her contraception, leading to her anger, yet Paul encourages forgiveness. Despite Cheney's distrust, Paul engages in a duel with Hate, causing her distress. But upon questioning his identity, Paul and Chaney realize that hate possesses more humanity than initially perceived. Shortly after, Chaney becomes pregnant, and the unborn child develops at an unusually rapid pace. Uthim's daughter Lichna, which is Sightail in disguise, pays a visit, conveying her father's insistence for Paul to come to siege. He finds himself unable to devise a plausible excuse to decline. He puts on his still suit and makes his way to Alia's temple. There, amidst a congregation of devout pilgrims, he becomes ensnared in the intrigue and fervor of the scene. After he meets with his guide, they set off for the siege. Uthim, a former member of Paul's elite Fidakin unit, discloses evidence pointing towards a Fremen plot against Paul. He entrusts Paul with his diminutive Tylaxu attendant, Bijaz, who possesses an uncanny ability akin to a living memory recorder, retaining faces, names, and details. Initially hesitant, he accepts, wary of a potential Tylaxis scheme. As Paul's troops clash with the conspirators, an atomic device known as a stone burner, procured from the Tylaxu, is detonated, causing devastation and rendering Paul blind. In accordance with tradition, blind freemen typically banish themselves to the desert. However, Paul defies expectations, affirming his divine status by demonstrating a supernatural ability to see despite his physical blindness. His prophetic powers have reached such heights, enabling him to foresee events with unparalleled clarity. Thus, by aligning his actions with his visions, Paul navigates his existence with unparalleled insight into the world around him. Within the urban landscape, Paul extracts the identities of his adversaries from Bijaz and puts Korba on trial. Paul accuses Korba of complicity in aiding foes by smuggling Melange to another planet and triggering the stone burner. Amidst the trial, Alia takes note of individuals in the audience evidently aligned with Korba. Simultaneously, Bijaz, operating as an operative for the Tylaxa faction, employs a distinct humming frequency to embed a directive within Hate's psyche, compelling him that upon Cheney's demise, he will assume the persona of Duncan Idaho. He is instructed to assassinate Paul when he is grieving his loss. Following this encounter, 
Hate informs Alia of the guild's conspiracy to wed her. Subsequently, Hate summons medical assistance upon discovering Alia's melange overdose. Cheney and Paul arrive at Siege Tabor, where Cheney unexpectedly goes into labor while gazing at the expansive desert. As she is assisted inside, Paul remains outside, contemplating the futility of absolute dominion over the universe. In this moment of solitude, Hate approaches Paul, who is soon startled by a distant scream calling his name. Paul sadly announces Cheney's passing, prompting a tense exchange between him and Hate, who brandishes a knife. However, Paul addresses him as Duncan Idaho, causing Hate's Tylaxa conditioning to dissolve. Stricken suddenly with both physical and visionary blindness, Paul approaches Cheney's lifeless body, discovering to his astonishment that she has given birth to twins, a revelation unforeseen by his prescience. Both enter the world with a profound awareness and a connection to ancestral memories akin to the Kwisatz Haderach. Amidst this revelation, Saitail, disguised as Lichna, intrudes, proposing to reanimate Chani as a Gola in exchange for dominion over his empire, but Paul declines. The face dancer resorts to threatening the infants with a blade to coerce him into compliance. In a moment of clarity, Paul, now able to see through the eyes of his son Leto, manages to fatally strike Saitail with a dagger. Guided by hate, Paul retreats to his quarters, only to be confronted again by Bejas, who offers Cheney's resurrection. Aware of the Tylax's sinister intentions to manipulate Cheney's Gola into harming the twins, Paul resolutely declines the offer and commands Hate to execute Bejas. Now both prophetically and physically sightless, Paul adopts the Freeman custom of a blind journey into the desert, securing the loyalty of the Freeman for his children, who are destined to inherit his realm. Paul appoints his sister Alia as regent for his twins Lido and Ganima, who are now under her care. Despite Paul's wishes for mercy, Alia orders the execution of Edric, Mohayim, and others involved in the conspiracy against him. Notably, Princess Irulan is spared, having forsaken her allegiance to the Bene Gesserit and pledging to educate Paul's children. As hate gazes into the vast expanse of the desert, his heart heavy with sorrow for Paul's decision to venture into its depths to meet his end. He consoles Alia, remarking that Paul's choice grants him liberation from the burdens of rulership, earning him everlasting respect from the Freeman. In this moment of vulnerability, Alia and Hate declare their affection for each other before retreating indoors.